Hello, guys. Oh, I still didn't have the courage to end that when it's six hours of extra time to see the Netflix Alexander. To be honest, I'm really not going to do it. But I have an idea that I could look at its three minutes to do Battle of Gogamela here. Because as you probably seen of, don't look at it, it is this historical accuracy video for Battle of Gogamela in 2004, Oliver Stone, Alexander the Great movie. And I will try to do it again with this, well, Netflix thing. Plus we don't have 40 plus minutes. I will try to do the do this one a little shorter. So let's go and take a look what we have here. Of course, sorry, there will be some pop-ups and stuff like that because after the second season of The Witcher, I'm not subscribed on on Netflix, so I have some sort of alternative streaming service for it. So, what we have here is the famous Macedonian phalanx armed with swords. And short spears. Mm, to be honest, I don't know really what to say about it, because everything I see is, well, just terrible. From the, you know, historical accuracy of costumes or weapons, which, well, after all, this is not just show or something like that. This is supposed to be a documentary. And I expect documentaries to be historically accurate. I understand that they don't have money for blockbuster battle scenes like Hollywood AAA movies. I understand that. That's okay. They, after all, don't need to put battles there, but if they do, they should do them historically accurate. I'm okay with this type of scene where they just zoom in to, well, it could be these 20 guys. It's okay. But, well, basically there is nothing right on the scene. There's just a couple of guys which slam their shield together. The both Persians and Macedonians are fighting with swords from the start. Of course, they have carried the swords as sidearms, but as sidearms with if the Sarissa break or something. Not as the main weapon, because basically, ex with exception of maybe Roman legionaries in antiquity and most of medieval medieval. Era, there is basically no infantry with sword as primary weapon. It's just fuck it. Basically, it's this in almost any any movie or series, but it's, it's not it's not the case. And now we see there in the documentary. Only plus points I could give them is that the Persian has these these proto kukri swords they were carrying. They were also carried by the Greek at the time, but at least one side had them. That's something. Not sure why the Persians are wearing something which looks like Indian headgear at Turban. But in reality, they were wearing their these funny hats, but whatever. Also, I'm not sure why Alexander is depicted as some sort of Egyptian pharaoh. But as I said, I didn't watch the whole show. Also, this is half in the half of the last episode, so I I don't know if they well 
play hard as the Alexander go mad and he think he's ancient Egyptian god or something really hard in the in the in the documentary, but I am sure that no no historical sources mentioned that he was dressed like like Egyptian pharaoh. He later in his in his campaigns he started dressing Orientalis. But mostly more like version King of Kings more than like Pharaoh. And there was some you could say disturbance in the morale of his troops because they were seem alienated by him when he started to roleplay his version. But it wasn't the case in Battle of Kogana. Darius has ten times more troops than Alexander. Is it's interesting take, which I I thought is well. We are like half century over with that because, of course, the ancient sources claims that the Persian army was many thousand tons. Hundreds of thousands strong, and when they march, they bring out the rivers and the uh, earth tremble against their food. But it's it's just you could say some sort of mix of propaganda and fairy telling, mythical storytelling. It's not a fact, and also even to large large estimates in the ancient sources were claiming stuff like 300,000 300, troops and not like millions like this lady in the documentary. The modern estimates are that Alexander have something like 50,000 troops and Darius have something like 50,000 troops up to 100,000 in the largest estimates. So after all, the armies are pretty, pretty same size with Persians, basically a little larger, but like twice the number of troops, not like 10, 10. It's just, it's just stupid and it's, I don't have a word. Cause this is, this is the sort of shit which was being told like two centuries ago. It's, now in the modern history, we know that Darius doesn't have a million troops with him because it's unsubstable by logistics, by well, the population of his empire, and uh, we could say his their levy levy's capacities is it's just it's just nonsensical. And now we have it in the Netflix documentary. This is not some sort of well, entertainment show or or some random guy podcast or something. This is something which seems to be called it's a documentary, and they are basically telling bullshit. It's just pure bullshit. This is basically the first thing they have right, and that is the Alexander has his famous old flanking move with his companion cavalry and some light infantry, which is absent in this Netflix show. But that that was really happened. The visualization where they basically take half of the Persian army, which was some sort of mirroring Alexander, is well huge sort of overestimation of it and 
if you think about it in the, the Netflix storytellers now tell that basically for Alexander's cavalry, which would be something like a few hundred of troops, Darius sent after them something like quarter million of his own troops, which is, you know, you don't have to be a military historian or anti-history expert or a rocket scientist or anything to do the math and, well, count it up that it's, it's nonsensical, it doesn't make sense and it's just, it's just wrong and dumb. It's made me sad. This is so, so fucking wrong. So, first of all, in the, we could say, antique reconstructions, we have Darius, who say that they should counter the Alexander's cavalry with its chariots, which didn't really happen. And now when we have this historian speaking, we have them saying that they were sent to the Alexander's phalanx. So basically the editor of the documentary, he was so dumb and did so sloppy work that he basically had two scenes which contradict each, each other right after one after one. Because we have Dario saying send the chariots at the cavalry and then we have the historian lady who is saying that they send it after the infantry. So you can have a boat. After, after all, it doesn't really matter because that's, uh, that was opening of the battle. It was right, do, did the right way in the Oliver Stone movie that they sent the skited chariots at the Macedonian phalanx, which failed miserably. But it was after the battle because after the battle started and, uh, wait, basically the shield wars lock to each other in the push of bikes. There is basically no space to where to send the chariot. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's literally impossible. Like the Doku series trying to portray it. It's, it's nonsense. Also, the, these are not skated chariots. These are just some chariots. It's just two, two horse chariot with Guy with the sword who is slashing guys, which is not how Skite's chariot works. At least there is the, you could say, close combat guy and the driver. I think the stone version has our, our chariot archers on the platforms, which is not historically correct, but it was still more historically correct than depic this depiction of chariots. At the time of Gogamela version, we were basically using just Skite chariots only. The, the classic chariot or archer platform chariot was discarded for a long time. And the skate chariot have okay, more songs of the skate, which are for whatever reason absent from this chariot. This is basically light, we could say archer chariot, but we told the archer and guy with the sword instead, which is not how it was. And the time in the battle where they were used and how they are used, it's totally nonsensical and made up. At least they got, well, right the part that the Macedonians opened their ranks and let the chariots drive by their, by their ranks and then close the rank and basically kill them when they're woke up in 
in the in, in their formations, but that was only possible because the chariots in the real battle charged them before the actual fighting starts, so we opened the ranks and let them in. It wouldn't be possible if the Macedonian flanks would be lock in with the Persian shield wall. So I said, that's stupid, and it was done right in the in the Oliver Stone movie. Well, Persian left flank really sort of shifted to don't be outflanked by the Alexander's cavalry, but not way like in this is big gaping hole. And to be honest, there is nothing preventing Persians, which has four unit. I don't think what's really representing the Netflix map. Forum just well going in and finish the Macedonian infantry center because it's, it's a huge, 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 huge gap which could be easily exploited not just with cavalry, which Persians have superiority in both numbers and quality, but also even by the infantry. This is, I, I think they, they try to portray that the Macedonian right was quite vulnerable because of the Alexander's maneuver, but it wasn't looking like that and it's just it's just bad like well most of the battle anyway. So. Let's take a look at the part two. Well, at least they give their the part that the Darius fleeing wasn't just some sort of, you know, losing his nerves and being covered or something like that, but just he decides to pull off and don't be killed by Alexander. Because after all, we could half of Persia was conquered by this time and it's, it's really a huge portion on the map, but it's still the second half was basically intact and he was still able to Levy huge numbers of troops and would be capable of fighting Alexander another day because, after all, even after the Darius was assassinated, the war was well, far from over and it, Alexander still had to campaign a couple of years, even uh, in the decentralized eastern, eastern provinces of the Persian Empire. So, if he, Darius wasn't assassinated, who knows? Maybe there's a big possibility that, after all, the Persians would be able, capable of stopping Alexander. And of course, this is all uh, this sort of what is scenarios, which we will never know how could they play off because it happened just the way it happened, and we we can, we don't know for sure what could happen. Yeah, I hope you understand my mumbling.
Whew. Well, so... That was Netflix, Alexander Butler, Gogamel, and... Ah, uh, damn. I don't know what to say more than... What I said barely. It's... I have few bits to do a stone version of the battle in the movie Alexander 20 years ago. But it was masterpiece and it was totally historically accurate because it's trying to record what Netflix did because Basically, there is well, there is no educational value in the depiction of the Gogamala in this documentary, because what what you see is just some bunch of guys run to each other, which of course sort of happened, but not the way how they portray it. And there, what do we see? Alexander with like five five guys on the horses, right on the right flank, and. Barrios sent chariots after them, which end up in Macedonian infantry, and then he just go and okay, I'm out. And basically, that's what what we saw earlier. In... It's just it's just so bad. I'm I'm literally speechless because it's so bad. There's... There is basically nothing to react to or how to compare it to the well real history because it's it was just terrible, you know. As I said earlier, it would be sort of okay if it was some sort of entertainment show about Alexander because you know it's I know that many people go ree about it, but historical shows are well historically there should be some sort of historical accuracy but they are but they are not documents they are their sole purpose is to entertain you while you sitting on the coach and watching them they are not there to educate you they are to entertain you and if they are also educational it's just bonus but it's nothing i would say it's mandatory but this is this docu series should be educational and for the battle of Ugemala, it feels horribly and to be honest, when I saw their depiction of the battle, I'm no interested in watching the the, the full the full series alone because just no. Well, the Macedonians were did horribly. The Persians were also done horribly. Their weapons and sort of infantry tactics were horrible. Cavalry tactics were basically there, there. There was basically nothing. If you look at the twenty years old Oliver Stone version, it's it's great. There are some some inaccuracies, but you get the overall look how the Macedonian phalanx operate, how they look in the battlefield. They're sort of savage depressions to be just mindless horde running <laughs> running to the Macedonian pikes but well you some sort of get the idea how the battle could look and there is nothing like that in this Netflix show. I think they sort of try to emulate some parts of the of the Alexander the Great movie. Most famously, I think it'd be the part when Darius flee and Alexandro is looking at him and thinking if he should pursue or not. But I think when you look at the scenes, you, they would they are probably really just copied from the Alexander the Great movie. But still, they they did it wrong even that because even in the Oliver Stone movie, you have the Alexandro who is looking at the flying Darius and thing if he pursue him or not but the reason why he decide to stay at the fields of near to Arbella is not because he's just ah, I will let him go whatever but it's because the messenger told him that his left wing is almost annihilated and he has two options he could try to pursue Darius and kill him and try to become the kings of kings because he killed the 
previous king of Persia. But if he doing it, he is his king that he will lose his whole army, and you can play play bid for the empire if you have no army. That's that's in the rules. So he decided to ride back and well save his left wing and uh, his whole army so he can fight in another day. It was just calculated calculated decision. And well after all we know it was the right thing to do because Alexander conquered the Persian Empire, so it, it played off. But in this Netflix Doku series, he's just well, standing here and looking at the distance, and then he just rode back. There is, there is, well, no reason why he do it. By just by the, by the serious logic, because we don't know that he he received a messenger which is basically telling him to go back or lose his army. It's just not there. Of course, there was that hint. Where we have the we, we, we've been shown the Parmenion, which is well, I'm not sure what we saw. He was riding on the horses. If this was some sort of the Samonian horse imagination by the Netflix, and he was sort of charging into the Persians. I'm not really sure what I saw, and, and we were we were told that he's. He's fighting for his life because the left wing is left wing is crumbling. But it was just said then when we moved on. There was no follow up from the historians or from the ancient scene itself. It was just it was sort of there and it didn't play right for from my perspective. It just doesn't work. Again, I will repeat myself, but it was done better in the in the twenty years old movie from Oliver Stone. But even when he doesn't have this help of narrators or historian telling it behind the scenes what is really happening, the way he directed it, it just all fit together and in it works. It it doesn't work there. I. It's just, it was pathetic, it was sad, and now I'm also sad that it's so bad, I I didn't expect much, but man, <laughs> my expectations were low. <sighs> well, it was horrible. So that's, that was how Battle of Gogamala didn't really happen. Also... If we look at the fact that the Macedonians doesn't have Sarisas, but just some sort of spears and what the hell the swords they were carrying. At the Prussian side we have also some just some sort of light infantry. Also no immortals, but that was that was case also in the Oliver Stone version and again no Greek mercenaries. But at least in the old Alexander movie we have Persian cavalry, which like big, big part in the battle. Now there are just some random guys on the horses, but whatever. And the uh, sky chariots in the in the Duke series were just terrible, and their use was terrible, and well, it, it was all just bad, big bad train wreck. And I don't know what to more to say in that it was just terrible, and it was just terrible. Well, it was <laughs> way, way worse than I thought it would be. So, if you want to see some audiovisual experience of Padlo Gamela, still take a look at the 20 years old version from Oliver Stone. It's also it's not perfect. It's not 100% historically accurate, but it was something like 90% historically accurate, and it gives you a really good, good impression how ancient warfare would look and. It's many levels superior to this Netflix show, so sorry that I made you to watch this my watch this Netflix shit and hopefully still see you on the next one so bye guys.